the Nürburgring is the world's most famous racetrack, surely then the carousel is its most well-known corner. Today we're going to show you how to tackle this very tricky but enjoyable section of racetrack. Technically called Caracciola Carousel, named after the very successful Mercedes-Benz racing driver of the 1930s, Rudolf Caracciola, who famously started using this water drainage section of track to gain a competitive edge. Over time the track was resurfaced and the corner renamed to become a part of the modern day Nürburgring Nordschleife. This section of track is characterized by a long, deep hairpin, steeply cambered with a heavy layer of concrete on the inside. Let's take a look at this Megan attacking the carousel in slow motion. The camber itself is very helpful, but the concrete is very, very bumpy and super slippery in the wet. Now, let's jump on board with Ron Simons, who has many years of experience teaching people how to drive the Nürburgring, as he explains to Ross Bentley just how to tackle the carousel. So carousel, now you see that you don't see anything, eh? because yeah. it's a bump before you come into carousel, and this curb here is a marker for your braking, then you go in very late, so the inside of the car falls, gently falls down, and the exit is by feeding and throttle so it spits you out you only need to control that it spits you out at the right moment you know okay. in, in a way it reminds me of daytona because you got to kind of turn your head and look up the hill to look around it yeah, you know? yeah yeah now we've just seen ron driving the carousel his turn in point being the end of the curb which lands him roughly at the third concrete block inside that carousel it just so happens to be my turn in point as well now let's listen to ross bentley best-selling author of speed secrets discuss the more technical aspects of this great corner Approaching the carousel, it's critical to think about what you're doing with your eyes. You know, we're always told to look further ahead, but when driving this classic turn, it's even more important. The challenge here, though, is that you have to look up and to the side to see where you're going. It reminds me of driving the high bank turns at Daytona, and yet you can't find two tracks more dissimilar. Now, the banking tips your head dramatically, so you have to counter that by tilting it back upright and because the circuit climbs uphill through the carousel, you need to look up towards the top of your windshield. So if you don't physically turn and tilt your head, you're not looking far enough ahead. If you have an in-car camera, watch for your head movement when you're reviewing this section of the track. Of course, looking ahead is both a physical and a mental thing. Again, you need to physically move your head and stretch your vision, but you also must have a clear mental image of where this section of the track is going before you even arrive at it. That way you know where the exit of the turn is before you ever begin to turn into it. When you do the right stuff with your vision, and then you drive hard into the turn and trust the banking to hold the car along its radius, it's like riding a roller coaster. Get it right with just a touch of patience in the middle, and the car squirts out of the banking and you rock it up the hill. What a blast. 